TV commercial district, as well as potentially in the gateway plan development district. Two, the Planning Commission recommends that the Zoning Commission consider editing the proposed definition to remove the permission of the sale of alcoholic liquor in this venue. Three, the Planning Commission values the town's long-standing policy of serving alcohol with food and establishments permitted to do so and recommends that the Zoning Commission consider an additional control, perhaps lim limiting the amount of beverage so served per person to some quantity consistent with practices in other similar facilities in the state. Perhaps 32 ounces would be considered. Four, the Planning Commission recommends that the Zoning Commission consider the brew pub regulation for inclusion in the special permit use, section 11.2 of the Light Industrial District. Thank you, Frank. Uh, that was great. I just wanted to comb through it. There was some language about mixed use. Yeah. Could we strike the residential part and leave it mixed use? Yeah, just to end that, uh, the, that, the applicable portions. There. Yeah. Okay. And, it, it get, and Mr. Gaishel, is that consistent? There's no residential in the LI. Right. Correct. Except However, affordable housing? Except for affordable. Well, it, what, what once was zoned LI. Um, at Sea Spray is now zoned affordable housing district. Okay. Um, I would note that adjacent to the light industrial, we have an R10 zone. We also have an R40 out at the Capitol, uh, Capitol Drive, Colton Road area. Um, whereas the area in the closer to the, the center of Flanders, um, you have gate, uh, well, state highway the Gateway Plan Development District uh, to the northwest and to the northeast, we have commercial and RU40 to the south. Um, and those, you know, noting that the current use to the land in the south is the municipal, it's the uh, middle school, followed by the community center and Lily B. Hang School. So uh, the, the nearest residential development would be, I think it's Heritage, or I'm um, sorry, that. Well, and I'd, I'd like to have a motion, Frank. I would like to add the comment. Um, how many numbers were there? Uh, the four. Comment? Four. I'd like to add five. Uh, um, compatibility with uh, affordable housing, adult use, and brew pubs. And see if zoning can paint that picture. So you want to add compatibility? Okay, well, we have not had a second. Well, I, I, have to, I have to amend my motion, but I'm just going to see if I have uh, distilled his thoughts. Uh, and we'll see if we can catch other thoughts, too. We could do it all in one. Yeah, I don't think you have to repeat the motion from the top, right? We just You, you just say as amended. No, I would, I would just amend it with item five. Um, you, yeah, he would say amended. I mean, but if you're going to add more, so you what, yeah, say we the motion fails, and then... Does anybody want to make a number six comment of any? N normally, you would have it seconded and then have this yeah. discussion, but... <clears throat> And then amend the motion. Oh, we didn't get a second. No. There was no oh, second. second. Very right good. Here. Uh, so now you we now you'd have, have you would normally have this discussion after yes. the second, and then the motion. So should, should I repeat myself? I think I called uh, it, and now we have uh, a protocol established. Um, but I, before I go to amending a motion, I think I want to capture yours correctly. The zoning commission and number five, we might add, the zoning commission should consider the compatibility of this change with other uses in the special use. Um, designation categories such as uh, said nursing homes. Um, did you put health spas in there? But you, you were listing ones that already exist. Yeah, I wanted to list the, the, the three unusual uses in the light industrial, which is the affordable housing, the adult use, and are now in group hub. Affordable housing. Adult use. Establishment. The entire adult use establishments. Yes, yeah. I see it. I see it. Yeah. So, subject to other things, I would. Uh, on item five, might read: uh, Zoning Commission should consider the compatibility of this change with other.
special uses such as affordable housing and adult use establishments. Uh, yeah, I, I'll just make, I just want to make a comment. In my tenure here, one of the first things we did was allowed alcohol in hotels in town. So, I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm observing a trend of alcohol being brought more and more into um, yeah, the whole town. So um, uh, I think it, I think our, our motion reflects uh, a cautious tone towards um, putting the puzzle pieces in place for really a, a, a really different kind of neighborhood in light industrial. You know, people don't typically go at 10 p.m. to light industrial to get a beer. Till now. But they do to the work out. Yeah. 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 Naturally. So I kind of changed it listening to that. Um, that the zoning commission should consider the compatibility and potential impact of this change upon other special uses in the light industrial zone, specifically affordable housing, or such as affordable housing and adult use establishments. I think that's better, more captures the concern. Very good. So we have a motion. Ernie seconded it. Yeah. Yes. How do we feel? Further discussion? And unless we had further about the, um, you know, I went on that rambling. I read the entire policy statement out of the POC, the only a small portion of which applied, and I probably could have just stated objective 2.2, which was to support and cultivate a wide variety of economic activities that can be easily integrated into the community with little or no adverse impact. But I think it stands alone in the document, even with the, mm -hmm. the ramblings where it kind of diverged a little about into the residential area. So I think it is clean as, as read. I, I would that just is the POCD. Sorry, Mr. Gage. Um, no, no, never mind. I, I'm just reading that. And I, I'm good. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Further discussion. I'd like to amend my my motion, adding uh, comment five. That the zoning commission should consider the compatibility and potential impact of this change upon other special uses in the light industrial zone, such as affordable housing and adult use establishments. And Ernie, do you amend your second? I amend my second as amended. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Six zero zero. Thank you everybody for, for bearing down on that one. Uh, and that was a speedy punt to zoning in time for their decision. Mm -hmm. Let's try to cruise through the agenda. It's 920. Uh, we have... Where are we Back to the agenda. I know it's flopping around on me now. We have municipal referrals. We have none. If you pick up on the old Planet conservation developments, uh, I'd say we, we, we could punt that punt to the next meeting. Status of subdivisions, punt. Thank you, dear. Nothing pressing. Nothing pressing. New business, East Lime subdivision regulation, proposed changes, section 9, assurances for completion and maintenance of approved, of maintenance improvements. Is that anything we need to discuss this evening? No, uh, as I, I would just comment that uh, we did provide last meeting the draft text. Great. So, if you haven't had an opportunity to take a look at it, I would just encourage you to do that, and maybe we can pick this up at our next meeting. Great. Uh, this brings us to reports. As chairman, I'm going to pass our, our ex officio Roseanne Hardy. Thank you for staying with us. I'm not going to pass. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> Always rich. Okay, first up, tomorrow night, town meeting. You're not off duty yet tomorrow night to see you at the town meeting. Four items. Special appropriation to approved baseball dugouts uh, that will come in at $26,360. Uh, <clears throat> those are, um, they have, that's a pretty firm bid that they have on it. They'll be able to do that. They feel very confident with that amount of money. Special appropriation, which includes, uh, it, which is a grant, which is pretty exciting actually. It's from, um, Deep 
recreational trails. The trail will start at the Darrow property and within two years you should be able to, should you choose, walk, bike, hike, jog, all the way to Hartford. Amazing. Wow. Leaving from Darrow. Wow. Uh, so this is really a great grant. Um, $49,000 coming into the town. Uh, and you'd go from, uh, you'd begin at D be you could begin at Darrow, I assume, as opposed to driving to Hartford and then having to run back. You'd uh, start at Darrow and then proceed. We have a rite of passage through the Yale property, which I uh, thank Art Carlson particularly for working very hard on that, along with Mr. Gary Gashel, uh to get permits uh, to pass <laughs> through that property, something that has not happened for many, many years. And uh, connect with the Eight Mile River Trail. And so from Eight, Eight Mile River, you, uh, shortly they'll secure some <coughs> easements uh, heading north from uh, right now we got 12 miles secured out to Route 82 and Devil's Hop Yard. From there, it going north, um, within short time, they'll secure those easements and you'll be able to get to Route 16 and the Salmon River State Forest. That's where you pick up the airline trail and get to Hartford. So it's, it's quite extensive for southeastern Connecticut. You'll have camping opportunities, at least within <coughs> Darrow. There's a tent platform that a Boy Scout's already conduct, constructed. Um, you know, along the way, we'll have to work with you know, the, the applicable uh, land trusts and landowners for camping opportunities, but uh, pretty exciting. Outstanding. I'd suggest you begin your workouts now. <coughs> Will do. Yeah. Um, <coughs> The third item will be to fund uh, the installation of a new system for 911 calls, and uh, that's $23,000. And also we have a grant to purchase a new boat for the Harbor Master, which we will share with Waterford, and that's $98,000, so come with your wallets. <coughs> Is that our total 98 or each? It's a total. We, we have to approve it. And in how order much to is spend Waterford? It. Going um, Waterford, in this particular case, uh, they are sharing the grant money that we that we fund. So this is primarily grant money. Okay. For this. I, I've observed a southeastern Connecticut Marine Patrol boat out there. <coughs> is that going to replace this boat? What what is that? Uh, I know the uh, the boat that this is replacing has not. I don't think that's been in the water this season. Okay. So I'm not sure if that's marine. Do you know? Yeah, Gary? there's like a, I said uh, southeastern. Yeah, I think marine. that the, uh, that might be through the Waterford East Lime Shellfish Commission joint. I mean the state police uh, boat, the Gray Ridge and Hold Inflatable. Uh, it's a cool boat. <coughs> it's big. Yeah, that's a state police boat. Is okay. It? Yeah. Wow. Mm. Right. Um, on the uh, agenda for the board tomorrow night is uh, the electronic sign for town hall. Uh, this would uh, this falls under zoning again signage. They have uh, um, they've approved <coughs> this. There has been, however, some considerable um, public opposition to this, feeling that it doesn't really suit the town and the town's image to have electric sign board. Uh, taking away from the idea of the small village atmosphere which many have tried to create. There's been, a, there's been at least one petition circulated. They have almost 100 signatures in opposition to this, uh, particularly from some of the nearby neighbors. And um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens with this and if people come uh, to comment in opposition or favor. Yeah, if I remember correctly, there, there are no other signs of that type allowed in our town this would be an exception for no this there will be a similar one at the t at the high school okay replacing that sign uh, this however they put uh, strict limits on it it will only operate for limited hours there's no neon flashing lights it's basically a crawl uh, downtown people who do a lot of walking have expressed concerns about the location of it at a crosswalk out here there's a lot of traffic there's a lot of walkers uh, concerned about people slowing, slowing way down to read the sign instead of paying attention for pedestrians. Mm -hmm. So there's been quite a few concerns expressed, and hopefully people will come out tomorrow night to express their opinion on that. 
Okay, uh, Board of Education. Well, uh, that was Monday night's meeting. Yes. And um, they did get new enrollment figures. Shows a total decrease of 68 students. Certainly not the large population decrease that people have been talking about. When you figure a loss of 68 students spread over 13 years of education, it's really neg negligible. Some right. schools, it's, they're down four students. The biggest drop is at Haynes School, which I think was um, 27 students at Haynes School. But I thought that you were more interested in the overall trend and taking a look at perhaps the last two or three years of figures and then projecting, particularly in light of tonight's discussion. Uh, so I thought that this would be a good opportunity for you to meet the new superintendent of schools. I could do the report, but you see me all the time. So I thought uh, it would be a nice opportunity for you to meet the new superintendent and to have him come and present. And uh, if you wish, uh, he would, would come either to your first meeting or if you're having the second meeting in October, he would be available to come for either one of those. Good idea. Uh, my only request would be that you put him on first as perhaps a special special delegation, special. I think that would be a great, great idea. idea. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you for okay. helping us. Uh, um, <clears throat> so uh, what, has, what we have seen happen, though, is in the distribution of enrollment, particularly <coughs> at the high school, um, there have been a number of electives that have been added, but there really has not been an increase in staffing. And so what's happened is that the required courses are getting quite large, uh, are getting very large in size. They're really at maximum. So when you look at the enrollment numbers, they really don't tell the whole story. Uh, to follow up on your concern about uh, the number of bedrooms in the units, uh, certainly it was not the understanding of zoning. That was my ex officio for many years. I was there for the initial discussions when this first came in. And it was very clearly that it would be one and two bedroom mm -hmm. condominiums, which is a very different clientele. Mm -hmm. So I think you're wise to think about uh, why people choose to rent apartments. And to Mr. Belantic's point, if you think of the rent that they're paying versus what they would pay to have their child attend the high school, for instance, that paid the tuition as an out of town student, it's pretty much a big break even. You can afford to live here, have your child educated for four years, get an East Lime High School diploma, which has cash to it, uh, and essentially they've lived rent free. Interesting. As opposed to if you, show, if you wanted to, uh, say, live, live elsewhere and pay tuition for them to come here. So um, as this continues to be built out, and people become more aware of this, and they do the math, you might you're, see a you're difference. You're saying our football program should be much better in the next few years. Um, <clears throat> also, I find the figures quite interesting because um, I have been, it has been suggested to me that I go up there at bus time and see how many students, how many children are actually getting on the bus. From some some people have mentioned this to me that the number is not in the neighborhood of four or eight. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that no, last well, remark. Well, well, I said the number is not in the vicinity or four or six. No, you have to repeat the whole thing. Uh, that uh, some people who live there have suggested that someone might come up and look and see how many children are actually getting on the bus. Where? In the at that to, to verify the at, the, at the gateway. The 280 apartments. Oh, oh that's where you're going. To yes. verify. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I thought you were talking about the high school. I'm oh, sorry. So did I. Could, could, that, okay. could that number be verified through the bus company? How many children are scheduled well, to be think, picked up? I think that uh, when I talk with the superintendent and say that you're extending an invitation, I will ask him to have the bus director provide that information <coughs> and present that to you. Right. And of course, there were also children who arrive who don't take the bus. But I find it interesting because I'm familiar with, with two of the students who are there, who are at the high school. And so that one student, I, I 
I happened to have a discussion with that student knowing that uh, they were living there, and I said, uh, well, aren't you a little cramped in the apartment because aren't there, there are three siblings? Yes, well, we, we, uh, my parents have a bedroom, and uh, my brother has a bedroom, and we two sisters have a bedroom. So there you have it, three bedrooms. And I think that that is something that um, both your commission and zoning need to inquire as to what the makeup of those additional 100 and so odd units would be. And, and what is the and what are they on the record stating it would be? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Go on the website, um, like yeah. Ann just did, and you'll see it says three bedrooms very clearly. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. what we what we found is they're advertising three bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Uh, the elementary school project was uh, presented again uh, with considerable downsizing. Uh, some of the things, uh, somewhat simple, downsizing to save money. Uh, for instance, they had planned for eight foot wide corridors, they'll reduce those to seven feet. They've reduced the size of many of the classrooms uh, to come in at a lower figure. That figure was not presented last night. That will be forthcoming, I, would suppose, I suppose, at the next meeting. But the fact is that they're already looking at reducing the cost of that and reducing the cost by reducing the size. I mean, the plan still is that Haynes would be closed, uh, Flanders School, with the exception of the central office building, the historic park, that would be saved. Lander School would be um, torn down and then a completely new Flander School. <coughs> Nyanic Center, that building would exist and be renovated and then an addition put onto that. Uh, I was at Camp Rail the other night for the joint land use study. Yes. yes. They described a chapter in the town's history I was unaware of where for one year students in our school system went to Camp Rail. Yes. That was when that was when uh, the new middle school was being built, right. and okay. uh, Haines School that. Haines School was being remodeled to accommodate elementary school students, and those elementary school students went to. Is that Denver. in the mix again? No. Okay, so the no. Flanders kids will stay at Flanders <laughs> until the new one's built, move, and then they'll demo. Right. Well, there'll be some shifting around. There'll be some redistricting to accommodate that. Oh, okay. Um, I just want to jump in on a, on a, on a general comment, and I want to reiterate a point um, I've made before. Y you mentioned that the lighting, and there's 100 signatures about the light, you know, an illuminated sign mm -hmm. in Nyanic, um, the boardwalk. We're now in the winter, fall, winter space before the boardwalk opens. Uh, we, as the Planning Commission, reference community character all the time. And it's, I think it's objective 1.1. 1 .1. It's mm -hmm. the, um, that term ha has been useful. Uh, it's becoming, I think, a discussion point. What is the character of, e of Niantic? Specifically Niantic, is it sleepy? I've heard sleepy thrown around. Do we want sleepy? Mm -hmm. To me, there's a robust discussion that's happening and the boardwalk will be a catalyst for change in the identity and the character of our town. I would like to see the 28 departments in town hall putting their heads together to figure out what the impact on their departments will be. And in particular, the three that come to mind are senior services, park and recreation, uh, and the police. Well, that just so happens that that's my next topic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I, I just want to, not to deviate from that, but so the Lily B, what was the plan? The because they wanted to. Was, did I hear? I don't know if I heard they it correctly. They will return that to the town. Return, because I thought I heard re, like release. I'm like they're going to lease it back to us. No, like, no, oh, they okay. will return that to All the right. town, and then the town may do as they wish. Uh, but they're already thinking that they would like to continue to use some of that, even though turning it back to the town. So, I think that will result in some negotiations. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, commission on aging. Let's see. That was Monday night. Uh, Commission on Aging, they are seeing uh, a definite increase in request for transportation. They've tried to fill that uh, gap 
by having substitute drivers come in, but substitute drivers can only be effective if they have a vehicle to operate. And so they're really reaching maximum usage as many of, shall we say, the younger elderly, which I put myself in the category of, uh, when they moved into town, they were and went into our first senior housing developments, Chapman Woods, they were, they were driving. You know, they, they were mobile. They were in their late 60s, early 70s. Now those people have aged, and they're not driving. And we've had new senior units also added since that time. So um, it took uh, quite a bit of work to get the extra uh, senior bus. So if there were two buses, they're also operating a van. Uh, very soon they're going to be, that's, they, they're going, they, they've, out, they've outgrown that already. And um, so I think that we have to be thinking about um, senior projects as they come in and are presented that, um, you know, in some cases we have put some conditions on those developments that they need to uh, contribute something to the town uh, in some way to kind of offset. Oh, interesting. You know. So whereas we, in the honeymoon period, were thrilled to have these active adult communities which don't put kids in the school system and it's free money, mm -hmm. now we're coming to reap well, what we've sown. There's, this is an elderly population and there mm -hmm. are town services that need to be expanded to meet them. Mm -hmm. And so I think, uh, and I don't think that that is, I don't think that that's, you know, a bad thing, but it's something that we need to be aware of Certainly. and need to plan for. Certainly. And uh, particularly as I hear that there's, a, there's another proposal potentially for another senior housing development yeah. that may yeah. be coming for right. mm -hmm. Go ahead. You know, a while ago, you had then mentioned the fact that having another senior section in the downtown part of Main Street. Yes. And now, listening to this, this may now be the time to think about that. I think it's critical that I the Senior Center yes. take advantage of the Main Street, Boardwalk, Park stacking effect that we have mm -hmm. in the community. And uh, I just gave, I actually just, just figured this out the other day. It, our Senior Center is defined by that building that was constructed in the 80, 1989, which moved the library from our downtown mm -hmm. to a centralized space with plenty of parking, not walkable though. Um, in the 30 years since then, uh, the book barn has come to define the oh, books yeah. in downtown. And I looked on the town website, they inventory 170,000 books in our town library. I asked the book barn what they count for the books downtown without a library, and their volume count was over 500,000 books, and it was an old count. But she she thought six hundred thousand books are down there. So to me, it was it was a, a good illustration of some of the unintended consequences, you know, of um, moving these big chess pieces of the senior center down. And and to me, um, the library I don't miss. I like the book barn. Mm -hmm. The senior center, though, I think misses taking advantage of the services that come with the main street that come with you know our downtown. And so basically what what you tra what you're doing for transporting of seniors is you're driving them to doctors appointments. Mm -hmm. There's now a big demand for service to Old Saybrook for the new medical building run by Yale. Oh, interesting. Uh, so we've got yeah. people that have doctors and visits, they want to go to New London, then you've got another percentage of the population they want to go to Old Saybrook and we're now reaching a a level of a portion of our population that is not in a condition to be driving themselves. Okay. Right. So um, I don't. I, I mean, just on the state level, I know that there, there we could look into a livery service as an option. Um, I know that there are folks who are like through through the state. Uh, I know they get transport to methadone clinics and taxi company. The, the, a taxi service literally picks them up and, and provides that livery service, and that's all they do all day long. But somebody has to pay for that. Yes, there is an expense, and the state of Connecticut does pay. For, they're the ones paying for that contract mm -hmm. with that company. But yeah, the, I mean it's just a means for them to. Well, uh, I don't let me know speak if, with the senior coordinator about that. I would have no idea what that costs, but. 
Well, now here's another thing that's getting that's in the mix, which I think also has some impact on planning, as you have uh, areas of town where it's suggested that this would be appropriate for affordable housing. And one of those things is that there needs to be access to public transportation. Mm -hmm. Our ridership has been very, very low with seat transportation, and it's costing us a large amount of money. And there is talk about redefining that district that, that we're in and that we might lose the service. Mm. Now, right now, we have maybe, on a regular day, eight passengers and a full-size bus. <clears throat> and uh, so it's not cost-effective and certainly not very energy efficient. But if we're thinking in terms of this aging population and a non-driving population, without that as an accessory form of transportation, for instance, to go shopping or go wherever you might want to, uh, that may soon become unavailable. Right. But I will also mention to you, I'm sorry, uh, that there are an awful lot of seniors that do not know about the bus route, where to pick it up. Exactly. As far as exa mm -hmm. they, they there's really, there's, there's no, no signage and there's no there's weather nothing. protection. I have people come in constantly ask right. me where the bus stops and when it stops. I have absolutely no idea. No idea. That's why it's not getting used. Wow. Great point. Well, and also I think the second reason is that um, everybody's very busy and nobody has three-fourths of the day, or most people, three-fourths of the day to use a bus that's going to pick you up at 8.15 in the morning and not return until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's a good point. You yeah. know, so we have infrequent runs, which also adds to the problem. As I personally experienced this afternoon, I lost my keys. I left them in Cafe Seoul, and I was carless. And without a adequate public transportation, I, I was left to... Can I get a ride back home to get my other set of keys? So that, you know, I'm not saying now if I had adequate public transportation, maybe I wouldn't even need to bring my vehicle and I could just commute to work. I mean, I live 10 minutes away, so with that in mind, I mean, you could be walking. <laughs> 10 minutes yeah, no. by a car. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> I, but I could be riding a bike, which that is viable. Mix. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I, I, Rosanna, I really appreciate your suggestion to bring in the, uh, the superintendent. And I think as the planning commission, it's critical that we get the best information on what is trending in town. Based on the census, there are two numbers that I've been watching. One is the youth enrollment in our schools, which over the past 10 years uh, was down 13 percent. This was mm -hmm. 2000, 2010. And our over 62 population which in the same interval of 2000 to 2010, I believe went up 47%. Mm -hmm. yeah, so to sure. me, those are the two moving mm -hmm. parts in town, and I want to piggyback on the idea about bringing the superintendent in and complement it with inviting somebody who can speak to us about what that aging in place uh, imp impact on our town is going to be. So maybe Kathy Wilson or... Uh, I think that would... Um, is she the best... Resort. I think that yes. would be, and I can make that arrangement with her too, because that, would be great. that happens to be my ex officio too. Yeah, I, I've, met, I've met with Kathy, Kathy before, and uh, I've been very impressed. And she's um, mm -hmm. um, we're very I, fortunate I, to have her. Leave, so you and, should be yeah, and we should active. get and we should get her whole honest opinion on what it, we got to be five years ahead of you know mm -hmm. conditions on the ground. So I, we're also I agree. In the where all the baby boomers now. Are getting to be 65 and 68, and they're demanding. Group and they're bugs. demanding a lot of stuff. <laughs> they are. Well, it's going to like I said, it's going to change the character of our town, well, and, and we got to be real about that and make sure that we. They're both equal taxpayers as well. That's mm -hmm. right. But there was a mm -hmm. just to side note all of this. There was a great article in a Boston newspaper last week about Niantic. I saw that. They wrote this entire. I saw that. I mean, what they said about the town was just incredible, and. What a great place this is. And something like from Boston to come here to this is what they're writing about actually made a point that this is where they should be or this is where they should visit mm -hmm. and come mm -hmm. spend their time. It was just an incredible article. And I, and I would emphasize in particular Niantic. That's what they did, and Niantic. They didn't say Flanders is beautiful. No, they didn't. Days. They <laughs> said Niantic. It was all Niantic. Yep. That's true. Yeah. yeah, very much so. And that was the headline. 
Okay, I have two other things because I know it's getting late. We've got all that. Uh, one, <laughs> one <laughs> it was, was the uh, issue that Frank brought up about the affordable housing and the inventory. Uh, we never will achieve 10%. Never. It's an impossibility because if they only have to give 30% affordable housing, they're adding 70%. So the formula is impossible to ever achieve. The only places that even come close are your big cities. Right. And um, we have, I have kept the real estate listings for the past six months as they appear in the paper. We have many, many homes every week that are selling that are in the category of affordable housing and you can't count them as part of your inventory because they aren't new units. Interesting. So the formula itself is quite flawed. Well, and I'd like to add to that. What blew my mind was when we were researching and I was reading the affordable, te uh, affordable housing report that's in our appendix to our POCD, it said that 27% of East Lyme residents qualify for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Now, that wasn't a number I was prepared to see. I thought it was like 10% of the population. No, living here right now, paying what they're paying, 27% would qualify. So it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. substantial character of our town. Oh, and I wanted to say one other thing about the enrollment, and that what is interesting is that using the high school figures, 24 students left the school district. Now, not, not counting the graduates, of course, but 24 students moved away someplace or decided to go to some other school. And we picked up 48 new students. So um, we also have to take into consideration the effect of all of these charter schools that are being created and the magnet schools. And that a number of students from the middle school are choosing to not go to the high school, but are choosing to go to New London, to the science, and. Uh, math magnet school, uh, so it's increasingly a number of choices available to them which they didn't have before, and that problem that will begin to figure into our enrollment figures as well. But the point is, if you're only losing four students, it's negligible. Four students out of a whole school. Even if you're losing 24 students, it's still negligible because it's spread over four or five grades, right. and you still have to pay for that teacher. Right. So. Okay, my last thing, yes, I am getting to the end, but remember that I, sa I saved time, I stored time from two previous meetings. Where okay, I did <laughs> unload. <laughs> I banked it. Uh, tonight's discussion on uh, the roadway with the um, map that uh, Mr. Gaishel presented to you, I asked particularly for the date on that, and the reason is that this was a topic of discussion at the Commission of Natural Resources. Now, Commission of Natural Resources for this roadway and the redesign of 95 has expressed in more than one letter to DOT that this is a very fragile land. It's on our aquifer, and our borders our aquifer. And what kind of mitigating things are they going to put in to the plan to avoid an oil spill, which would contaminate our water supply? Um, so here's, here's the question, here's the little short memo that is sent as a follow-up to some earlier correspondence sent by a member of the Commission of Natural Resources. I'm wondering two things. First, has a hazardous spill containment mitigation system to protect our aquifer been designed into the Exit 74 reconstruction plan? Secondly, where may I get a copy of these plans? In an earlier message, you mentioned that the reconstruction will first need all necessary permits, but that didn't clearly answer my question. If you were able to send the plans as an attachment, that would help. Many thanks. Response. At this time, we are negotiating a contract for a design firm. Just beginning the negotiation. The design is a 0% is at 0% completed. This is memos dated September 9th. I wonder what that cost. Dated September 9th. We have a concept drawing only. And that concept drawing was submitted by the developers. That concept works with improvements that are currently envisioned 
uh, envisioned by the developer, and there's a little more to it that really doesn't matter, but um, attached is a PDF of that preliminary con concept. I could not get that to print out from my computer. But it nearly needs to be clearly understood that it is only a concept. There has been no public vetting, nor has there been any detailed engineering develop drawings developed. And this is nothing more than a concept, and it should not be perceived or portrayed as anything other than that. We are building the project to all applicable standards for design and permitting, and no, we are not including a system of spill, hazardous spill containment or any kind of a mitigation system. I believe that it is upon us to insist that that happens. And to do that, we need a response from planning, we need a response from zoning, the Natural Resources Commission. Uh, I think that this here is an opportunity for us to correct a very serious flaw the, and, and a highway that was designed in 1958 when we weren't aware of our aquifer and we weren't aware. You know, and as Art Carlson has said to you several times in presentations, we forget about it because we don't see it. It's not like Lake Konomic. We walk on it, we drive on it, we build on it, and we forget that it's there. So I think that this is something that we really, really need to get on top of and uh, make it known. I have um, asked to meet with uh, Representative Jutilla. I have yet to call contact Senator Famica, but I know that I know that he's aware of this and that this is something that's of concern. Um, and so I would um, like to suggest that you uh, put this on your agenda for uh, perhaps next meeting is too too busy, but that you consider drafting a letter to um, support what the Commission of Natural Resources is trying to do. It, certainly, certainly. I'm embarrassed actually that we were talking all about those four ramps and no one said anything about the aquifer, which is, of course. Well, Joan talks about it all the time. <laughs> I get it. But the so uh, you know, spill response team, I mean, fire departments are trained for things like that, and that, that, that's a, I, I don't know, that a road construction, I well, guess you can build things into a road that, like, uh, retention basins and... Exactly. This should be included in firms, the design. The response uh, plan. Right. You respond, but the spill has already happened. You know, we should be there. There are methods that are available. Yeah. If you're going to rip up the roadway anyway, containment, right? Then mitigation methods. Right, and there's a, and, and it's not a boogeyman. It's not something abstract. There is a documented crash of diesel fuel miles yep. from that, and we got lucky in that right. it dumped into the Niagara River and was flushed out with tides. But if it was 100, and, or I should say. 60 seconds sooner on the highway up the road, it would have been right in our aquifer. Thank you. Thank you all for your hard work and for Good serving. Stuff. Thanks for going the thank distance you, with you, us, you. Roseanne. Hardcore. Yeah. Right, we go, are we not going yet? Uh, we have a question. Yep, go ahead.